Hey guys, today I'm going to be doing an advice video about some of the hidden secrets of UC Berkeley. So these are some of the resources that you might want to look into, um, especially if you're an incoming freshman and don't really know what to do. I know I definitely felt that way when I was an incoming freshman. It was a huge school and you really don't have any sort of guidance as to where to go to look for research applications, for class suggestions, for different I don't know anything <laughs> so I think these are some of the resources that are really really useful to me throughout my college career and I still use them all the time now I'm mostly focusing on EECS and CS resources but one of the resources that is by and large used by every single person on campus pretty much is Berkeley Time. Berkeley Time is a student-run website that lists all the different classes available at Berkeley so it's basically like classes.berkeley.edu, but better because they give you more information. They give you information about the average grade in the class and they can sort them by the different professors. So if you don't really know anything about a professor and you wanna see what their average grade is per semester, you can compare different pr professors to each other for the same course. So you can see like, which professors are more difficult or which one is more easy. Maybe take it with the easier one just so you can have an easier time. Also mention all the different things that are listed pretty much on the classes.berkeley.edu website. We'll have like units, how many people are enrolled, and that will update periodically throughout the registration process, as well as what breadth these classes were filled. You can sort all the different classes by requirements such as like breadths or American cultures or American history requirements, units, department, class level, things like that. And then from those filtered suggestions, then you can then sort by like the average grade in the class. And what I usually do personally is for like those breath classes that I don't really care what I'm taking um, and pretty much anything is interesting to me. So I will basically just choose the breaths that I'm looking for. So I'll just filter out all the international breaths that are available in the upcoming semester and then sort by average grade. And then whatever one posts up first that has like the highest amount of A's in the class and I'll like consider it strongly compared to like what people are getting like a C for a breath class which you probably don't want because breaths are made to improve your GPA kind of I mean it's for mostly like holistic education but also most people use it to just improve their GPA so if you do want to focus a lot on your breaths GPA because your technical GPA might not be as there, then I would highly suggest using the Berkeley Time tool so you can sort by average grade. I find it much easier to navigate than the classes.berkeley.edu site, which actually takes like a freaking shit ton of time to load. I don't even know why. It's a really slow website and I find that Berkeley Time is much easier to use. So it's just berkeleytime.com and I'll put all the links to the resources that I mentioned in this video below. One of the resources that I think is really really useful is to join the Facebook groups of Berkeley. So there is housing at Berkeley, there is free and for sale at Berkeley where you can definitely buy a bunch of different textbooks or furniture if you're trying to furnish your new dorm or apartment. There's definitely like class pages for Berkeley um, both on Facebook and Instagram and people post their bios and if they're looking for roommates and things like that. But overall, I think the most important one to be in is probably free and for sale because you can just buy really, really cheap stuff like on there. People are selling literally like monitors for like $10 because they just want to get rid of it when they graduate and stuff like that. Okay, now we're going into the really niche stuff of EECS and CS. So if you're not an EECS and CS, you can leave. I mean, this probably doesn't really apply to you, but I still think it's a really good stuff to put out there. <laughs> First up, we have the CS draft schedule. I don't even think I figured out this website until like my halfway through my freshman year, but basically this website gives you the draft schedule for the proposed professors who will be teaching in the upcoming semesters, usually two semesters ahead. So right now they have fall 2020 and spring 2021 already on here and you can go and look and see what professors are going to be teaching different classes in the spring and it has every single pretty much CS and EECS class on these draft schedules so if you prefer one professor then you know to take it in a certain semester and I think it's really helpful because a lot of the times the professors make what the class is 
So if you have a really crappy professor and it's really tough class, then your semester is going to be very, very tough to deal with. So you really want to be looking at these draft schedules and planning your course schedules around them to make sure you have the happiest time. For example, right now I see that Nicholas Weaver is teaching CS61C in spring 2021. If I was an upcoming sophomore and I had the opportunity to take it in the fall, but I was like, maybe I'll hold off to the spring. Maybe I should take it in the fall when Dan Garcia is taking it so I don't have to suffer with Nicholas Weaver. Things like that. You can predict with the CS draft schedule. There you go. Another super, super useful tool to help you plan out your schedule throughout your college career is the HKN course guide. So this is a course guide. It basically looks like this. It's a shit ton of bubbles, but essentially it has a CS and an EECS version. So they have lines going to each classes. So these are the classes you should take before you get to this one. These are, of course, they're not always required, but these are like the recommended paths to get to those classes. And then when you click on each of these bubbles, they'll also say the topics that are covered. So like very briefly over the entire course schedule, um, the workload, like how many hours it takes and like how much lab and how much homework there is. And then also when to take it, like should you be an upcoming sophomore after you take in these sorts of classes, then you should take this class. And then they also have a section that says what's next. So like what classes you can take after that that are like sequential. Also they'll mention, which is like one of the most important things to me, is how useful it is for internships or research. Um, so if you want to go down like the industry path, this, these classes are the ones that you should take. If you want to go down the research path, definitely take these classes. I find this is really useful because it's written by students, people who have been in your shoes and basically it's like a overall review and it's been curated over many years. So they definitely know what they're talking about and they'll tell you straight up if it's like a tough class, like you're going to have a shit ton of homework to do and you'll know that that's what you should be preparing for and definitely go to this if you're looking for like accurate descriptions of a class because I find like classes.berkeley.edu the actual course schedule they don't really tell you really anything about the actual workload because they'll say like how many hours of instruction there is and this is how much homework that you're supposed to be getting but in actuality it always ranges and I find that looking at this course guide by HKN students is a lot more useful than looking at what the university thinks the class is. <laughs> Another super useful tool that you can also cross-reference with this website is this Google Doc. Let me find it. It's literally called <laughs> Useful Stuff from Berkeley CS Facebook Group. And this is just a little bit not as refined as the website itself, but it definitely has a lot of information on here. It'll tell you the course, the workload, the difficulty, the overall, like if you should take it if you're in this major. So there's always people updating and editing this, but you kind of get a sense of like, you should definitely take 188 in order to become a CS software engineer, or you should definitely take E126 if you're gonna do these and things. Google Doc is like pretty much open to everyone. So it's a little bit less curated and I don't know how accurate every single thing is on there. Although most of the stuff is pretty general consensus with HKN's reviews of the classes. One of the really useful tools on this page is also they have a breakdown um, ranking the classes by difficulty for the upper divs. So when you have the opportunity to choose an upper div, you can look at this ranking and decide for yourself whether you would take a really hard class or a really easy class, you know, it's all up to you. They also have like a lot of just FAQs on here, such as like, should I take CS174 after 126. Yeah, there's a shit ton of like specific stuff, like even about the individual projects for these classes on this Google Doc. So I highly recommend that. Basically, just like if you were to look at every single Reddit post about UC Berkeley Eeks, just copy and paste it onto a Google Doc. Here you go. That's it. Of course, Reddit is a great tool, but it's kind of hard to sift through a bunch of different posts and over how many years definitely get a more accurate and a more refined search from that.
So the final thing I would say is a lot of people at Berkeley, they like to look into research opportunities. My two cents is that it can be pretty difficult to find research positions as a freshman for specifically EECS and CS professors. They're like notoriously not taking freshmen because they don't have upper div experience. So unless you are really fluent in like machine learning and AI or something really specific to that professor or robotics and you're a genius or something and they miraculously hire you, then it can be really, really difficult to find a research position. What I would suggest is to apply broadly and even apply to things like in data science or even in like biotech. You'll probably end up doing some coding if you look through the project descriptions um, and you make sure it aligns with your interests and you're actually doing some kind of software stuff that applies to your major somewhat. Um, and then you can write that on your resume and even though it might not be in the CS department, pretty much only the Berkeley people would know that. Um, your employers will probably not really care and they'll just see that, oh, this person did like Python programming for this professor that's pretty lit, you know? Anyways, if you are looking into research positions, I would highly suggest looking into URAP. They have pretty strict deadlines, um, but the URAP program is like really streamlined so you don't have to go out and like email professors cold turkey. Is that the right word? <laughs> but also have a direct way for you to get credit for the research that you're doing so you don't have to be accredited by the professor. They'll just do it through the URAP program and it's super easy. My freshman spring semester, I actually applied to both CS, EECS, and a data science professor from this URAP program and I think the only person who got back to me was a data science person. CS and East ones are a lot more competitive, but data science, you're still doing programming, so it didn't really matter. Just be aware for the URAP program. I recommend it because it's easier to find the projects that are actually open and easier to get in contact with the professors, but they have a really, really short application window. It's like a week or two. So you probably want to write your application ahead of time. And by the time school starts, like the fall semester starts, it literally will be a week until the application deadline. So you're just gonna have to like send it in. So I would highly recommend thinking about this ahead of time because I didn't know about the opportunity for research until my freshman spring semester. So by the time I found out about URAP in my freshman fall semester, it was already too late because the application was well past. I'm telling you guys this now so you can go apply if you're interested in research and you don't really know where to start. Besides URAP, there's a bunch of different other programs that have research opportunities. I'll link some of them down below and you can also directly email professors, although it's kind of hard to get a hold of them. I would honestly recommend going to the professor's websites and looking for the grad students instead because they're probably more likely to respond back to you and be more willing to hire you as a Apprentice, I guess. And if you work for a grad student, you're technically still working for the professor because they're like grad student, professor, you. So you can probably still get a letter of rec from the professor. Anyways, I can't speak much about CS or EATS clubs because I didn't get into any. Yeah, I've tried applying to so many and at this point, I'm just like burnt out and I don't really care. And honestly, it's kind of good because I don't like to be doing coding 24 seven all the time and that's like my entire college existence so i decided to like apply to different clubs instead if you're into that go for it make sure you apply broadly um and to a bunch of different clubs because every single club probably only has like five or six spots every semester that are open for like incoming freshmen it's not many and there's usually like 300 applicants okay so especially for the cs clubs the competition is fierce yeah, I don't have much advice about it because I haven't had much success with it. Good luck everyone on everything this semester. Um, for the incoming freshmen, I'm really, really sorry that you won't be able to be on campus at least for the first time in this semester. Honestly, that was like probably the most fun time of my college career when I like didn't really have any cares but to like make f new friends and stuff but I really, really would suggest reaching out to people online. Maybe you're trying to find people in your area if you can meet socially distanced six feet apart. But I wish you guys the best of luck in this upcoming semester. 
and let me know if you have any questions down below. I will link all the resources that I mentioned in this video in the description box. Okay, see you guys. Bye.